Welcome once again to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am your host, D.B. Smiley. Casting solo tonight, not joined by anyone. Foreveralone.jpg. Feels bad, man, but I at least have NGS Hots to keep me company. And we got some Division C East action here between Hand Bananas and Hot Boys. And faster than the timer can start. Tracer already getting banned. Feels banned, man. Feels banned. Um, the Division C East action kind of haven't haven't casted these teams before. To the best of my knowledge, both teams are new uh, to the Nexus Gaming series. A lot of new teams. It's really been growing. I mean, today there was a, a post on Reddit about it, and a lot of people joined. There's that highly anticipated uh, begin. ban of phoenix but going straight into a medivh i like it it's uh medivh i think is just exceptionally powerful right now just in terms of damage output like it's not even his he's not a utility hero anymore he can just damage like no one's business um very aggressive first pick there's gonna be a stuke off to kind of mitigate some of that uh medivh aoe damage and i like the pick It'd be a good map for the stew the stewby dooby doo no, that's what i call my cat his name's stewart Hashtag personal life. But, uh... A couple of HBs in this game. Hot bananas, or hand bananas and hot boys. I'm probably going to say hot bananas and hand boys at some point. Um, hand bananas, this is... Hand bananas coming off a win over Project XD. Hot boys playing Squad 9 Alpha, veteran team, tomorrow. But this is their first Nexus Gaming Series game. Hot Boy's gonna go ahead and make sure to grab a Hanzo. Always, always good to have a Hanzo. Here comes the Garage Malfurion. So, really strong <coughs> meta drafts by both teams here. Um, I actually, this this gives me hope for this game to be pretty good because it seems that you know these guys aren't choking around. They're they're drafting very very seriously, and I am all for that. I am I am completely serious. I am the most serious fucking guy you will ever meet. I have no time for shenanigans. Like, some casters will sit there and make Beatles puns during the entire draft and cover up the word dick with their cursor, but not DB Smile. Oh, wait, I did those things already. Huh. Feels bad, man. Second band coming in. It's gonna be the Maiev. Maiev was still up, and yeah, I, I mean, she needed to be banned. Uh, unless they were gonna take her, she needed to be banned real fast. Because Garash Maev esta es no bueno. Um, good to get that one off the table. Diablo Counterpan. This is like the most meta draft I have seen uh, by far in Nexus Gaming Series Season 4 so far. No juice pirates. High priority picks. Getting supports. It's going to be fun. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. Dragonshire, going to be map number one. Volskaya Industry, going to be map number two. Dipping into the shot clock here, halfway down. Two picks coming for the hot boys. It's going to be interesting to see where they go. They need to... I, I would like to see them potentially go solo lane, but I think they want to get their tank here. Um, would not be surprised to see an ETC. Combos very well with Stukov, potentially. Could be ETC Jaina would actually make... Quite a bit of sense. Although you wouldn't have the best camper, so maybe a gray main. But could it be Joanna Gold Dan? Okay, the Joanna is actually a pretty common pick into the Garrosh Malfurion. Gold Dan is an interesting one, but it's actually a pretty good counter to Malfurion. The reason being, Gold Dan's Fell Flame actually outranges Moonfire in terms of how far Malfurion can place it. So Malfurion has to step up into Gold Dan much of the time to heal. And, um,. Also, getting more backline to deny Malfurion healing. You have to horrify in case Garrosh tries to step up to separate him. Uh, push people away from the portals with the horrify so you can secure kills. Ah, uh, you know, I think about it and I, I really like this pick. You got tons of wave clear. Hanzo's already your camp clear, so you don't really worry about the fact that Goldan is not amazing. He's not bad, he's just not amazing. But here comes the soul laner, Sonya Jaina. Wow. This is, uh... A very, very strong comp with potential for a lot of very high aggression plays in the back line. Malthael, so it's going to be a skill matchup in the top lane between Malthael and Sonya. And Malthael, 
Strong pick into the Garrosh. Um, you know, all that percent base damage. Gonna ignore the armor. Very strong draft from both teams. Both teams are really coming to play. Making good picks here. Um, one team today gonna get their first map loss. Either because it's their first game in the case of Hot Boys or Hand Bananas dropping to 2-1 and one or 3-1 and one off their first loss. One of those is going to happen. We'll see here in just a second. Sorry about that, everyone. I am back. Just needed to uh, take care of a couple things. Um, but here we are. Hand bananas on the left. Hot boys on the right. Looking at these comps. You know, there's... Medivh can make a lot of plays on this map. Uh, around the beacon points. He can also get up and fly pretty quick to the channel point if you're able to get it. Neither team getting a global. Global's really kind of disappearing uh, pretty rapidly from the meta. I've seen a bit of Dahaka lately in NGS, but not at top levels of play. I haven't seen too much Faustat despite the buffs, but we'll see where it goes as we are jumping into game number one here between Hand Bananas and Hot Boy. It's going to give you the nice tasty overlay. It's going to be Ray on the Garrosh, Sammy C going to be on Jaina, Mosher going to be on Malfurion. Defop is going to be on Sonya, and oh, I forgot their last player's name. Draco going to be Ten on seconds. the Medivh. And over here on the right, Juan Pablo 64 going to be on the Five, Mafael. Four, Roya three, is going to be two, playing. Oh, one. I can't actually tell there. That is. Fight well, heroes. That's stacking. Icarus is on Gul'dan, I can tell that. Uh, Rising Star going to be on Hanzo. Frost, Absol on Joanna, and Roya is on Stukov. Hashtag quality casting. Hashtag follow. Um. So you're going with that standard kind of block build into the Hanzo. Perfect choice. Medivh already with three stacks on that. Kind of baseline master's touch talent. Different. Gonna see uh, pretty standard talent choices here. Although it is the E build instead of the Q build. <coughs> Ooh, Jaina getting separated from the... Joanna, excuse me, getting separated from the team. Doesn't have the iron skin. Slowed quite a bit, but gonna be able to get down. And Joanna going with Hold Your Ground. Um, so trying to make sure that you have Iron Skin up quickly. Makes a lot of sense into this CC potential. Very surprised to see Gul'dan going e build though. Q build to me is always just, it's why you pick Gul'dan. It's very, very consistent sustained damage, whereas E is a little bit less reliable. But it's also at 16. It just starts to absolutely wreck. It can be a bit harder to set up value at 16, especially if you don't get stacks early. Can't be using the E for wave clear, certainly, if you want to build those stacks. But we'll see how they adjust. Um, Four-man rotation going. No one's staying bot, so I could potentially lose some minions bottom. Let's keep an eye down there. Mafeo currently with a lead. Good job, Juan Pablo. There is a flip on the Rising Star. Rising Star doesn't have his trade up, I believe. There's a stun. Quite a bit of damage. Gul'dan already stacking that stun quite well. Both teams already missed a minion here, too, here in the bot lane. You're going to catch up. Experience Oak, very, very even. Garage moving on to the point at the moment. Joanna going to be able to step up, though, and isolate. Garage now moving very aggressively and flips the gold Dan. There's the flip stun into the blizzard, and Icarus just gets absolutely lit up. What a great aggressive play there by Ray. Really good communication to Sammy C to say, hey, follow this up. Free kill, boys. 3v4 kill. Very good to get. And now Medivh went mid, trying to get the channel, but Nathan and Sonya trading 1v1 down here in the bottom. Stukov very low. He may not be able to get out. In fact, he does not. Let's see if Juan Pablo can survive. Nope, Juan Pablo gonna have to give up the point to Sonya. And Medivh in position to channel. Uh, Jaina has it. Is Medivh gonna be able to get it? Nope, there's Joanna, and she ain't gonna leave that point. No sir, no how. Mafael moving up for round two. Good Ancient Spear. Juan Pablo trying to just stay away from that Whirlwind. Trade positively here. Use that Soul Rip. Now, Juan Pablo did go die alone, but Default manages to hold it off long enough for Medivh to get this channel. It's an early lead here for Hand Bananas, playing uh, playing pretty well at the moment. Two kills up already. 
Here comes Kick. Iron Skin going to be used by Frost Absol to negate that. Only four stacks of corruption now by Goldan. Not going to get it done. They need to spread that quick. Interesting to see Hanzo go into the W build. <coughs> Can be valuable on this map specifically around those points. So we'll have to keep an eye out for it. Certainly very good camp to clear. There's a flip on the Frost Absol. Frost Absol has the Iron Skin, but is already quite low. Stukov getting the healing out. Does blow the trait to make sure Frost Absol's alive. Dragonite gets good value. Gets, uh, oh no. Eh, amazing value. Decent value. Gets one cannon in each lane. Stretching their experience lead out a bit. It's almost a level, so they're going to grab a level 7 here in just a bit. Medivh keeping vision, telling his team, hey, might be a good time to evade. And with Joanna separated, they may have actually gotten this point. Corruption going to come out, only get one stack. Unfortunate. And this is definitely going to be the camp. Silence coming in, but there's just no way they can engage into this. And that's going to be a siege camp stolen. There's a root, potentially looking to be engaged. Turn around by Hans on to Ray, but Ray going to be able to walk on out of there. Keep an eye on this top lane. Juan Pablo started to push it a bit, but Defop has shown a potential to step in and trade positively. That Battle Rage talent can be very, very powerful, and now with that Poison Spear, can kind of return some of that dot damage. Frosh stepping up, getting even more stacks. Almost done with a quest here, four and a half minutes in. With that level seven talent, gonna look to get some degree of an advantage here. Medivh doing a good job soaking mid, keeping that experience lead. Now Ray stepping up. Ray is just playing so aggressively. Maybe a bit too aggressively, though, as now down to about 100 health. Protect going to come in. Make sure, protected, by the way, that uh, Garrosh gets out. Rafael, Sonia still pulling each other. I like what Juan Pablo is doing here, just kind of denying soak, making Sonia have to walk through. But there's the Ancient Spear, a little bit of a misplay. Has the die alone, so could trade positively into this, but Sonya does also have the self-heals. Here comes Engage Roy in a bad position. Jaina getting thrown on top. Stukov gonna drop to Jaina. And at the moment, the Garrosh play very, very strong here by Ray. Um, and this is going very well for Hand Banana. Full level lead still. So Dan now with that level 7 should be able to build stacks quicker, but can just take so long to stack this E and with without an ability to cleanly engage or step up, it's just very, very difficult. Um, Hanzo gonna move on down, try to help out down here. Dan throwing some stuff out. Oop, here comes a potential throw on to go, Dan. Great condemned by Joanna to heal it out. Now, here comes some turnaround damage. Root. Garage is low, but he's just so hard to finish. I don't think they're gonna do it, but they are gonna be able to step onto the point here to grab it. While Sonya's capping top, so Medivh not going to be able to get the channel in the mid lane. Meanwhile, up top, Mafael <coughs> waiting patiently, knowing he needs to get some health back. But now level 10's here. We have Polybomb over Leyline Seal. Can be very interesting. This was, uh, Tempo Storm pulled this out. Uh, Warlord's Challenge into a Polybomb. Water Elemental going to be the choice, potentially to harass that Hanzo. And it's going, as well as Mathael, actually. It can be good against that. And then it's also going to be Twilight Dream. Here comes the flip on the Gul'dan. Gul'dan absolutely going to drop here. Twilight Dream blown just to absolutely secure the kill. And that could be a channel here mid. Nope, Rising Star doing a good job. But now Rising Star has to back up. And Mathael not going to be able to cap this point in time. And now with level 10 advantage and the Dragonite up a level and a half, things starting to look very good for Hand Banana. They are playing very well. Ray has had really, really good garage play. The team has certainly coordinated their kills. Here comes Ray. Watch to see who gets thrown and what happens to them. There's a good punish to slow down Garrosh. So Garrosh going to back up, but you know, trusting his supports to heal him back up. It's um, it's good when you see an aggressive Garrosh willing to willing to kind of play and and realize that even when your health bar is at half, you're still not half dead just because of that armor. Five Dan has to come down to defend. Meanwhile, Sonya soaking top. Level 10's now coming in. It is Last Rite, Horrify, Massive Shove, Bless Shield. And it's going to be Dragon's Arrow. I actually like the Massive Shove here into the Garrosh. It's good to zone him out. Oh my goodness. Frost Absol just absolutely getting nuked there. But now going to be able to get out of it. Big Dragon's Arrow coming in. But Joanna actually going to be the first to fall. Well, Dan trying to chunk out damage. Actually 
with Hanzo managing to secure the one-for-one -one trade onto Garage. That's going to help them out with that comeback XP. But map control, definitely favoring Hand Banana at the moment. Only one fourth down, though. The Hot Boys can get back into this. Moving up here, what do we see? Both teams kind of feeling each other out. Sonya already working those bruiser camps. Going to get those in the lane shortly. Let's see if we get a rotation into bruisers on the side of Hot Boys. Looks like they're a little bit worried about soaking this bottom, and they want to fight, but now's the perfect time to get bruisers. That or maybe wait a few seconds, but as soon as that Dragon Shrine warning comes in, you want to be able to have the bruiser lane. Oh, Ray going for a very, very aggressive flank. Um... Maybe a bit too aggressive, Ray thinks, realizing that she's a country fucking mile from her team. But here comes the flip onto Hanzo. The flip stuns have been there, and there's the Warlord challenge with the poly bomb on the Joanna. Hanzo already deleted. Now Ray throwing up now Fury in ahead. Now Fury gonna try to root. There's the Twilight Dream. Doesn't even need the root. Gonna kill Joanna off that, and uh, that's seven kills to one. Power gathers with and Banana shines. doing very, Unleashed very well. Wrath. Hot Boys now kind of struggling. They're behind in the macro. They're behind two levels in Soak. Not really able to find kills. They, they haven't figured out the answer for this Garrosh yet. I mean, it's really going to come down to a really good massive shove needs to be used to disengage the Garrosh before he's in position to separate someone. And then from there, they need to immediately bless shield and engage. And I think that's the only way they get a clean engage. We'll have to see. Juan Pablo now focusing on clearing this minion, but here comes Garrosh, and this fort is not safe haven. Juan Pablo gonna drop because the fort is distracted. And I love this. This is such an aggressive play. Knowing knowing the situation, knowing, hey guys, like this is we can just walk under this. And uh, taking out Mathael, who you know, was defending the fort. Uh, meanwhile, push here on the bottom, trying to get some value. Without getting a clean gauge, I mean, Goldan is, is way behind in the stacking with where he wants to be at this point in the game. Anzo is at least done, but through this end, it's just going to make it very difficult. If they can even reach 16, they may not have the Goldan stacks needed to get the value off that. Uh, so very important that they find a way to build stacks pretty safely here. Medivh starting the channel. Joanna there. Here comes the Fop moving up. Frost Absol going to be the focus target. Blowing the Ice King. Good Ancient Spear onto Roya. Here comes Mathael. Channeling on the backside. Going to take some damage. There's a separation. There's the taunt onto Joanna. Dragon's Arrow turning around. Polybomb, but Joanna going to be able to disengage it. Here comes the chase. Last Rite's going to secure the kill on the garage. Frost Absol so low has the Iron Skin to survive for the time being. So that is the first positive trade of the game. They are going to get it. The question is, can they <coughs> prevent the channel? Because Frost Absol is already very low. There's the trade heal from Stukov. He's going to be able to get back into it. Draco is channeling on the backside. Do they recognize it? There comes the flashlight from Joanna, disengaging it just before it goes through. As Mathiel gets it, but Frost Absol is going to go down on the front side. Now, Stukov didn't go with the root. Went with the lingering spines. I got uh, just like a general tip to people who are playing Stukov out there. It is it is worth grinding and forcing yourself to play root until it's second nature because it is so valuable to be able to land that. Mafael solo defending top. Sonia wanting to get this fort down. But minions dying, so having to back up is the fop. Hero slain. Ooh, and down here in the bottom, Goldan dropping again. I assume it involved Garrosh separating someone and killing them. T-Tours, everyone. T-Tours. But, um... Boy, this is just... I mean, they're they're running their kill squad well. Garrosh has been a very, very impactful hero this season for Nexus Gaming Series. Here comes a collapse now onto Sonya. Looking like they want to get it. See, if they had a root there, 100% Sonya dies. Um, if they had the, if they had the root from Sukov. Because it would have been pretty easy to land off the Condemn. Again, I just, I really like that talent. I also think it's OP and it's probably needing to be nerfed. But we'll see where it goes. Cruiser camp getting picked up. 
on the bottom. Going to generate additional pressure into this key. Bruiser in the process, by the way. Uh, you know, that, that was the camp that was taken to let them dive Malphael. Um, just getting so much value here on the map with those level 16s. Moving into their siege, they still have a level, so they can look for a fight here in bottom lane after they get their siege giants, and that would definitely be advantageous to them. I expect them to do just that. Sonya, gonna cap this point up top. Here comes the potential fight into bottom. Goldan trying to get the corruption out, only hits one. There's the taunt on the Stukov, and he gets absolutely deleted. Dragon's Arrow coming out just a bit late. No chance for Stukov to save himself. And now it's just a full retreat on the side of Hot Boys. But Hand Banana is showing no mercy. There's the flip on the Frost Absol. Poly Bomb to secure the kill. My goodness. I mean, they are just showing no mercy at this point. And the Garrosh play has been absolutely fantastic. And now Malphael, he's not going to be able to save this. Gonna need to back up. Needs to be careful. Um, Medivh starting the channel to point. No interrupt in sight. So this could very easily be bottom keep, which is, I imagine, where they're going to go. Yep, they are heading straight to bottom. Not wasting time on mid fort. Hey, my teammates in Hero League, notice that the keep is more valuable than the fort. Get more of this and less of this, teammates in Hero League, who will remain unnamed. Because I forget all your names after the, uh, after the match is over. Pushing up here with the Dragonite, gonna burn very, very quick. Here comes Garrosh, once again stepping out Joanna. Didn't get the combo there exactly. There's Malfurion, big silence coming out, hitting several. Now Jaina's actually in a bit of trouble. Potential disengage, Malfael trying to move on to Sammy C, but there's the Twilight Tree. It actually secures a kill onto Joanna, and Malfael not far behind Orphi coming out just a bit late to do anything. Now it's a full retreat. Hanzo gonna be able to turn around some damage here, but not actually going to be able to really defend this. Malfurion gonna have time to heal some people up. Ray stepping up once again, and look at this. They're just absolutely terrified of Ray at this point, and they should be. Ray has been playing Garage extraordinarily well. Not going to be able to do more, not going to be able to go for core yet, but with a three level advantage. It's just a matter of time, and uh, it's a very, very short time before they get 20. It's a very, very long time before their opponents do. Not going to be able to take this fort yet. They are setting up, though, to take this siege camp. Hanzo sees it, but there's just no way they can fight this, and there's a flip on the Hanzo. There's the stun again. Hanzo actually managing to trade out of the wall. That was a good horrify to save Hanzo there. But it is an ultimate down. At least I think. Blizz, please fix ups. Blizz, please. Now I'm gonna move into the Bruiser camp and just continue to take control of the map. And by taking these camps, they're getting closer and closer to 20. And because the camps don't give XP to the enemy team, it was a change at some point last year, this is gonna take even longer now for Hot Boys to find 20 if they can even do it. Push up here to the Bridge of Death, maybe a bit aggressive. Nope, just clearing up those. Minions to get the bruises there. Now they're gonna step up. Here comes Garrosh looking for Frost Absol. Frost Absol with the Iron Skin. Ray gonna step up. Will flip on the one. Pablo with the stun lands perfectly. The combos have just been absolutely on point. They've secured a kill every single time. Cats are knocking shit over. It's just a crazy game, guys. Now gonna push up into this fort with the level 20s. With Mathael down, I mean, they can pressure in very aggressively. Garage doing just that. Once again, comboing in onto Joanna with the taunt on the Warlord's Challenge. And they're just, they're working the combo to perfection, and they secure a kill onto Joanna. My goodness. Now throwing the two closest enemies. That's just a lot of trust. And they're going to let the minions clear up this mid-fort. While they focus here on moving towards bottom bruiser, generate even more pressure. And minions are going to do it. Sonia moving into the camp. Garrosh scouting the enemy team. No real follow-up to secure any kills, but doing good scouting there. Good aggressive positioning. And this map is just so blue. Oh, Eiffel 65 here. Bruiser camp getting picked up. No one really even contesting bottom yet. They're going to move down have to clear up this double camp. Sonya moving up to the point. They could get the channel. Someone needs to get onto this bottom shrine, but I don't think they're going to do it in time. Sonya's already channeling. Yep, this is going to be a Dragonite. Easy peasy. 
Dragonite, this one should go straight to core with the level 20 advantage. Sonya gonna come down and join the fun. Yep, they are moving straight to core. Keeping an eye on that. Let's see where this goes. Garrosh, once again, stepping up aggressively. Misses the Q there. Cross Absol in the back. Massive shove misses on the Ray. Now here comes the turnaround. Big silence there by Stukov into the Horrified. Last right. Actually going to shoot. Secure a kill on the Garrosh. And now with Malfurion going down, some very, very late signs of life here on the side of Hot Boys. But now they need to get up top and defend. Meanwhile, DK definitely going to move into mid. Keep an eye on that. Ooh, Juan Pablo jumping in now has himself a Jaina. Ooh, but the root comes in, followed by the kick. Juan Pablo gonna survive, but Sammy gonna survive with less than 100 health. Good ice block to survive the poison damage, followed up by a great kick from the dragon. That was a very, very good save. Juan Pablo back in, get the health. Need to push out this bot lane with the catapults. DK is still up. For another nine seconds, gonna see if they can at least get one of these key towers. Focusing it down, here come the right clicks. Well, Dan does have the quest done now with the Echo Corruption, so this is going to allow for a lot of damage. And, ooh, Draco barely getting out of that. Dragon's Arrow could secure two kills. Last right on Mediv. Ooh, it gets protected by the very last microsecond. Ooh, can Rising Star get the kill? On to Sammy C. Once again, Sammy C just barely surviving. Protected, by the way, though. Man, that was the absolute last second. No level 20s yet. There was the... Lens blown. Now trying to move on to Ray. There's the poison damage. Just trying to disengage at the moment. They still don't have their level 20s, but they could pick them up here. But two catapults here moving into the bot lane. Gotta keep an eye on to that. Here are level 20s. We got play the game. We got the haunt, which is absolutely huge. Blinded by the light. I really like that choice. Angel of death here. Ooh. Cross Absol getting chased. Once again, good unstoppable. Didn't get the stun out. Those unstoppables have been on point at this matter. And then push comes the shove. Pretty standard pick from Stukov. Um, let's see where this goes. Now moving in... To the Bruiser camp, gonna go ahead and take this once again, continuing to just create pressure on the map. And the problem here for Hot Boys is even if they're able to kind of put together, they've, the they've started to put together a comeback, but they just have so Who far to come back. I mean, look, mid power. fort, still healthy. I guess if they want a DK, they would have to just race bottom. They'd have to kill the fort, because otherwise the core would still be immortal, even if the keep went down. So they'd have to kill the fort. They'd have to basically get a team white, immediately get Dragonite, kill fort, and keep, and then get more kills and go to core, and that's not going to happen when Joanna gets absolutely deleted like that. But a huge horrify! The haunt was there, and it absolutely secures the kill onto Jaina. Now Ray in a bit of trouble. Medivh portal going to get Ray out. Weren't able to get the kill. Medivh has been protecting those last rates rather nicely at the moment. Uh, that's two deaths prevented just by Mediv on last right alone. Denying them stacks. Denying them stacks here. Sonya gonna get the top. No one middle to channel at the moment. Mediv and Malfurion in the bottom. Here comes Garrosh. This is a 4v4. Joanna not there. Here comes big chunk of damage from Gul'dan. Medivh, though, kind of stepping up, and with no tank, they're just really afraid of this Garrosh, and they kind of have to be. Uh, Polybomb could absolutely be brutal here. Trying to get the flip. Now, here comes the channel from the Fop. Gonna get Death Shrouded away. Now, keep in mind, Malfael, because of Angel of Death, not going to be able to... Ooh, there's a flip on the Stukov. Here comes the combo. And Gul'dan had backed so far up. Stukov trying to heal himself out. But they just backed so far up and kind of left Stukov behind a bit. Hanzo did manage to channel the top, so it's not going to be a DK. So they're still alive for the time being. But with no healer down, it's going to be really, really hard for them to defend for 50 seconds. They're going to have to rotate extremely well. They need to already have someone on bottom. 
just to be able to prevent the DK. That or they need to get someone mid immediately. They want to moving into bottom, but Garrosh can sit on the point, and if they simply get the Dragonite, they're going to win. Mafael not able to get the interrupt, and now in a bad spot with the taunt. There's the self-cleanse, so going to be able to get away. Dragon's Arrow coming in with the play of the game, collects no one. This DK is going to go straight on the core. It's going to take a miracle for Hot Boys to survive this. Um, it's going to take an absolute miracle. They have no healer. There's a flip. Double stun. Holly Bomb with a Warlord challenge. Horrify comes in. Can Joanna stay alive? She has to blow the self storm shield. Is she going to get away? She does not. Sonya chasing kill. Draco low on the sideline, but now it's just a matter of letting the Dragonite right click the core, and there's really nothing that can be done about it. Hanzo burning as fast as he can. Massive shove shoving Sonya away, but it's just going to be the end of the game. Hot Banana had a hard time ending it, but they never lost control of the game, winning with all structures up. 21 to 5 kills. Very, very strong game from them. We're going to move into game number two here on Volskaya as uh, Hot Banana taking game number one in this series. We'll be right back.
Alright everyone, we are back here on the Nexus Gaming series. Moving into match, map number two, Hand Bananas taking game number one. Looking pretty strong doing it. Couple moments here and there for Hot Boys where they looked like they could get back in the game. Just weren't able to secure kills. Medivh bringing in the protected, by the way. Strong start for them. Now we're going to see Hot Boys first pick in the draft. Let's see how they handle this. Garrosh was a big freaking problem, but so was the Medivh. And <coughs> Medivh specifically can be brutal on this map, um, just with some of the tools he has, like the Arcane Explosion. Could be that Medivh needs to be the ban. We also don't want to give up a Garrosh Medivh. Or a Garrosh, uh... Garrosh may have... They do, they do identify Garrosh as the problem. They just seemingly... I don't know if it was they didn't know how to play with it or what. But they did struggle with the Garrosh a lot. Trace are going to be banned. So we have both Maev and Phoenix up. Phoenix is up pretty good on this map. I'd like to see the Phoenix taken. Super high priority for Phoenix and HGC, but totally balanced, guys. Totally balanced. Um, I think Phoenix should try to get picked up here. Let the game Prioritizing Medivh, though. Felt really threatened by it. Diablo, going to be the pick. Trying to deny the potential Leyline APOC. Diablo, very strong tank. And Stukov, so Phoenix, still up. But Diablo Stukov is a strong combo. A lot of potential to isolate someone. It's going to be Malfurion. You know, if you have Medivh and Malfurion, Maiev is a sexy thought. You could take Maiev and ban out Phoenix so you don't have to deal with it. Or you could take Maiev and maybe ban out... Um, maybe ban out Blaze for the bunker. And then just deal with the Phoenix. Tracer is banned. So there's going to be no Tracer Malfurion today. No sir, no how. I'd like you to sing you the song of my people. It's called Why the Fuck Haven't You Picked Phoenix Yet? Why the fuck haven't you picked Phoenix yet? Oh, it's gonna be Blaze. Okay. So with that, I was wrong. But that is still the song of my people. Going with the Blaze. <sighs> Interesting. That's Normally when you're going Mal Medivh Malfurion, you really want to enable some kind of really hyper damage assassin. And they haven't picked it yet. And now with both Tracer and Genji banned, and them unlikely to get... Phoenix or Maiev at this point, because I imagine they'll have they'll feel the need to ban out one of them, and in my opinion, that should be the Phoenix. Probably won't get Maiev. What do they go? Um Interesting. I, I, I mean, as far as bans, you have the Malfurion. They are going to ban out the Maiev, which I actually think they had tools to deal with in the Medivh. I actually think Phoenix was potentially the bigger threat. Because if Warden Cage come down, you can bunker until portal's up, get out, portal your way out. Greymane's Sonya. Greymane's fallen down the meta ladder a bit, but I really like him here. Um, I like him for the wave clear he brings. I like him just for the general damage he can bring. Cursed Bullet could be very strong into the blaze. Can't easily... Cursed Bullet can't easily be anticipated by Medivh. So it's a good way to get a, a burst chunk, force out a panic protect, and then counter engage off it. But here we are, this late in the draft, and Phoenix has not been picked. Did did the admins ban Phoenix? Did someone, like, not tell me this? 
Because, uh, let me, because, like, legit, I'm just surprised we're not seeing a Phoenix. Um... I, I don't know. Like, I just, I'm, I'm not saying, like, you have to pick Phoenix, but I'm just surprised. Dipping late into the clock. It's gonna be a primarily mage-based damage focus. Don't kill. We had a... What? What? Wait, what? Is, like... Did Phoenix just get nerfed in the last five minutes? Like, what happened? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Like, I'm not saying either team drafted bad, by the way. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying these two teams drafted bad. I just, Phoenix wasn't picked at all. Um... Phoenix was not picked at all. Well then. By the way, that actually was my guitar. Anyway, um, but... What is... Huh? I mean, like, both comps are independently strong. I think the Kael'thas is actually pretty good given kind of the melee heavy focus the potential to spread the living bomb um i just i don't know guys i don't know i i i'm confused so with that thank you uh nexus gaming series for the host welcome i'm the bald guy um i'm the bald guy who drops the f-bomb on stream anyway gonna move into this game um Gonna be Draco on Greymane, Ray on Diablo, Four, Sammy gonna be on Jaina, Masha gonna be on Stukov, and down here in the bottom, Defop on Sonya. And here we go. It is Hot Boys gonna be Roya on to Malfurion, Frost Absol on Muradin, Juan Pablo gonna be on Blaze, Icarus going to be on Kel'Thas, and oh dear. Oh, don't. Ah, fuck, I need to cheat. Rising Star on Medivh. Um, very interesting. So there's no real hyper carry to this comp, unless, I mean, Muradin can trade out damage pretty well, but they're really kind of going with the long game kind of play with this build, which can definitely work, especially with the three melee. Kael'thas is going to be very, very disruptive just with the living bomb. Frost Absol doing a good job. Much, much seemingly more comfortable rotations here with this Kael'thas out of, out of the side of Hot Boys so far. We're going to see if they can keep those rotations going. It's going to be Juan Pablo and Defop once again. Oh, the sprays. Oh my god, so many sprays. Look, look Alarak has his eyes and then Sonya with the spray. Anyway, um... It's just... Good way to play so far. Moving in. Ooh, could have... Maybe if the stun were on Sammy C, there actually could have potentially been a root, and that may have turned into something? I don't know. Perhaps I'm just being a bit <coughs> too optimistic. But looking at the talents, Devil's Do will go down in history as the least shocking talent in the world. Ooh, good... Good engage here with the Medivh, and Ray is going to get deleted, and that is a good kill on Diablo. It is going to deny that stacking pretty quickly here. That was just such a fantastic kill to get at the time they got it. Uh, going to really slow down how quick Diablo can get his stuff going. And going with Portal Mastery here, so very, very cool. Interesting, new habits being picked up. So going with the regen globe for the pyromania focus. So really trying to go with this anti-melee focus here. Uh, very, very much so. Extra gravity laps of range with the nether wind. 
And I, I like what we're seeing so far. Dust of Appearance is an interesting talent. Here we go. Both teams gonna move down here and face Glory face first. The way Glory is meant to be faced with the face. Frost Apsol, gonna deployment. get this point initially, gonna turn it red. Nope, Diablo getting a toe on the point to contest it at the right time. Now trying to step out Frost Apsol, here comes Sonya. Dwarf Toss gonna have to be used. Turn around with the gravity lap, stun. Now here comes Blaze. Ray, jump down to a bad health. Half health, excuse me. But still the point being contested. Keeping a toe up. They do have a turret, so it's gonna zone out a bit. Good Blizzard putting Medivh in a bit of trouble. Juan Pablo blo blowing that Pyromania, though. That could force a disengage here. Sammy C, pretty low on mana. Gonna need to go back and tap, but Sonya coming in with a very, very aggressive Whirlwind, but it's working out quite nicely. Gravity Lap comes in to interrupt the Whirlwind. Frost Absol needs to back up, let the third wind kick. Ooh, there's a stun on a Malfurion. Protected, by the way. Malfurion getting away on the treadmill, or is he gonna get finished up? That was a not great situation there. And that's just one you have to be so mindful all the time of how big a threat Diablo is on these corners. You can't get stunned into them. It's just so much damage. I'm fearing going to pay the price. But death timer short enough. They should be able to get back to get a toe onto the point. At least contest overtime if nothing else. Medivh flying up. Blaze still soaking this bottom. Level 7's in the meantime, though. Pretty standard 7 talent choices. Wizen Duelist from Greymane. That is potentially extremely confident, but it could work very well. You know, Cocktail can be harder to get value on on this map just because the fights tend to occur outside of the lane. Diablo looking for something. Guts the stun. Perfect timing by Ray, but there's a root. Ooh, and Kel'Thoss just gets absolutely annihilated. Frost Absol trying to get away. Just really, really good burn here. And just the synergies there. You know, normally you don't want to focus Muradin, especially when Blade gets done. But Muradin was a bit out of position. They were able to burn him quite a bit after getting Kel'Thoss killed. And uh, just really good communication. They all switched to Kel'Thoss, even though Blaze was low to secure the kill. They managed to chunk down Muradin a bit to force the disengage. And Bananas playing very, very well in this series. Duke off Silence over the wall, and it's going to deny quite a bit of territory. Going to be very difficult to play into. Medivh trying to step up, but can't even step up to get an Arcane Rift off. And now, it's just can they do anything into this fort? Mid cannons weren't taken. Normally with the first uh, Trig Lob, you try to get cannons to get that early XP lead. They already do have some value, though, and they may still get this fort. Down to about 10 seconds, now starting to have rotate away. Meanwhile, Blaze pushing in bottom here, trying to get some degree of split, so close this level gap. Trig Lob Protect, they're going to focus this cannon. I don't think they're going to get it in time. Oh, Jaina should be able to finish yet with... So they managed to get two walls. They get quite a bit of damage on top board as well as well top, which can be very beneficial for the second phase. Here comes the separation. Trying to focus Diablo, but Diablo with 86 souls is going to be very, very difficult to kill. As I realize now, I have Diablo showing in the bottom. Here, let's focus this minion. There we go. That's clear. Now the change on to Sonya. Sonya in quite a bit of trouble. Gets interrupted. There's a blizzard trying to save, but Sonya goes down. That's going to help, but they're still pretty far behind in XP as Hot Boys, so they're going to need to race level 10s pretty quick. Still, with Sonya down, level 10 not going to be able to do anything immediately with it. Moving rotation now. Clearing up waves. No one really doing anything too exciting. Diablo gonna invade this fortification camp. Blaze could actually get collapsed on here as well. Uh, in fact, that, that I I would potentially expect that. Although Juan maybe ex hearing from his team that oh they're missing, mounted up, shouldn't get collapsed on here. But fortification camp is stolen. Not gonna be able to do much with it. Now moving towards the support camp. But level 10s are here. It is Leyline Twilight Dream, and it's Combustion. So hyper-focus into the anti-melee. 
A lot of AoE damage. The problem is, is that Stukov, in my in my opinion, is the best AoE sustained healer in the game. So they're really gonna have to find a way to get the kill, or maybe they're just trying to go for the same fight. Here comes the APOC coming in. Frost Apple's low, might need the Ley Line Steel just to disengage. Ooh, but there's the Ring of Frost, but Stukov goes down in that. So does Malfurion, but Bloodbath all over the place. Souls down, Leyline Seal gonna secure the kill onto Jaina as well. And that worked out extremely well for Hot Boys as they go four for one. Sonya being the lone escapee. That was absolutely fantastic. Ring of Frost was good, but just the turnaround damage there. Okay, so there it is. Um, it was enough to get the kill. You know, with the Combustion, with the Phoenix, with the Twilight Dream, I mean, they just, they have AoE damage coming out of every orifice of their body. And now it's going to let them step up, get a little bit more XP. They are evened up with that comeback XP. <coughs> Cannons are down bottom, one cannon down top as well, but there is the well advantage. There's no well top on the side of Hot Boys. Juan Pablo hasn't started to rotate yet. Could get cut off in the rotation. Looks like they're actually, rather than try to cut off Juan Pablo, they're going to maybe try to aggress onto this 4v5. Should just back up, wait for Juan Pablo. Frost Apple stepping up here, though. There's a root onto Diablo, but Frost Apple just taking so much damage. Protected, by the way, going to come out. That's Wrath of the Berserker. You can disengage now. Let the third win kick. Let, let Nerodin, excuse me, get heavy heavy get healthy me talk good tonight me use good words i have the best words um vote for me for president anyway now stepping back onto the point wrath of the berserker is down leyline seal comes out ring of frost collects only malfurion here comes the apoc off the disengage big combustion hits four sony on the back line Trying to focus Ray now in quite a bit of trouble. Trying to get on Frost Apple. Frost Apple with the Avatar. Now Sammy C in a bit of an awkward position. Frost Apple could go with the body block. Is there the Storm Ball? Flame Strike. Jaina does go down two for zero. Hot Boy showing some life. Showing a lot of life. That Leyline Seal combustion working very well for them. Big four man combustion setting up a very positive fight. And now with 13s on both teams. You know, it's equal talent here again, but they're definitely going to get this point, and they're already pushing up here, so they could get some degree of value. Blaze going off to soak to make sure they win the race to 16. Hot Boys definitely showing signs of life. They got punched in the mouth last game, but they are punching back just as hard here. This AoE damage just not being handled at the moment. Stukov did go for that virulent reaction, so keep an eye for that root. That can actually... I mean, if you land that route, you can actually kill Muradin. It's it's no joke. Like, you can literally kill Muradin in that time. Watch for Diablo to also look for wall stacks here. Muradin playing very patient, probably aware of it. They're kind of just forcing the Triglav Protector in here. Focus on to Medivh. Medivh trying to use the portal. Does get out. Blaze is split soaking, but... They blew about 75% of the Triglav Protector's life just trying to kind of face tank the fort. Now going to rotate down, get the XP from the cannons. Ooh, Sammy C's in a bit of an awkward spot if they could turn around on it. But used, instead of rooting, used to focus the tower. Are they going to be able to get it? No, they're not. Blaze here in the bottom, using the conveyor belt to move up, join the team. Punisher, or Punisher, I keep calling it that. The Protector, only with about 10 seconds left, so not really going to be able to do much with it actually just going to be abandoned but they are going to move down here onto bottom and they're portaling in potentially looking for the kill onto sonia there's the storm bolt here comes the root going to be dodged a little bit of a miss on the root that root hit that was a dead sonia but now a bit of an awkward position here as they're kind of waiting for a medivh portal to get out or for the minis get locked up but this is going to be a fort for fort trade looks like now we're going to see a move into the camp this could definitely threaten keep wall up here on the top both teams pushing now starting to back keep in mind those keep cam is worth quite a bit 16's in now 16's gonna be big talents a lot of self-sustained stone form and heal treatment but of course that 
Fury of the Sunwell can be absolutely amazing, especially with the slow off combustion. Leyline coming in, not going to collect anyone. Everyone had already gotten out. That's a big cooldown to use. Going to be down for 80 seconds. So going to be up at 1410 caster math. Hashtag caster math. But the beacon won't, shouldn't be up by then, or it certainly wouldn't be capped by then, so should still be able to have it for the next fight. Medivh scouting Sonya, been knowing they've been trying to invade a lot of camps. <coughs> now moving on to support camp. Not going to take the engage though, and Diablo is going to have that support token. That AoE healing could help out. Sammy's seen a bit of an awkward spot. If it gets scouted, it could get turned on here, but we're going to rotate away. Right now, rotating is five, trying to look for some opportunity to go for that pickoff. Our hot boys. Gonna move into their fort camp. Blaze is top. This could be an invade. Muradin staying in the bush, scouting this one out. Here comes Muradin. Needs to be careful, though. There's a big stun into a first bullet. Ring of Frost misses. Frost Absol having to blow the avatar. Portal comes in just in time, but the APOC gonna secure the kill. Oh, no. And now Medivh in trouble, didn't get out in time, trying to get to that treadmill. Leyline Steel has to be blown just for the escape. Mafurian dropping the route as well. So gonna get away, but does lose Muradin in the process. Not the best look. Muradin had the right idea anchoring there, but underestimated that combo. Cursed Bullet with that devastating charge. Which at this point is going to be doing 10%, uh, excuse me, 13% uh, thir of Muradin's health. Ooh, Stukov now getting rooted. Or sorry, not Stukov. Kel'Thas getting rooted. Diablo could go for the charge. Does find it. Protected, by the way. But no heal onto Icarus. Moonfire not going to be able to save. Detours, everyone. Apologies. But very aggressive invasion. And this is something Hot Bananas did last game. They weren't afraid. You know, when you're when you're when you're under your fort, you feel safe. But when there are minions there, you have no reason to feel Thermal safe. Activation. And uh, I like it to see Hot Banana right. being willing to kind of push that issue. Diablo doing doing some doing some cardio here on this treadmill, just getting ready for the next fight. Then you're gonna clear up this top lane. Right now, Hot Banana looking to get three points off a domination. That's going to be the focus here. As uh... here we go. You know, right now, just with Blaze top with Kelthos dead, they're kind of just running around the map. They're not even really getting good soak value. Um, but already with seventy four percent, Murden gonna have to step eventually. Now Diablo is gonna get seen here. Here comes the flip. There's the stun with the finish. So much damage. Ring of Frost gonna be a miss. There comes the Apox. Stone form blown by Murden. Can he stay alive long enough? Here's a big potential five man combustion. It does hit four at the very least. Ice block forced out by Jaina, but now Jaina gonna get turned around on. But it is gonna be Malfurion dropping first, and that will secure this Triglav protector. And now Icarus in a bad spot as is Rising Star. Sonya diving so aggressively. Shield coming in. There's the Mana Addict. Going to be able to get away for the time being. Sonya playing very aggressive, though, with the Triglav Protector now. They should be able to get this keep, and that's going to take them dangerously close to level 20. Looking at just real quick the damage numbers, and you can see that uh, Jaina has been doing work, Greymane's been doing work, but Diablo, 30k damage. Keeping up with Kel'Thas in damage. That's how much value this devastating charge challenge has got. It's hitting Muradin. It's hitting Muradin. It's hit Muradin and done a ton of value. Almost got Medivh there. Medivh protected, by the way. But as soon as the protect ends, bad things happen. Juan Pablo now getting focused by the protector. Level 20s are at play. There's once again the stun. Ray having to use the Hellgate to get out, but Blaze going to drop to Sonya and the Trachlov protector. And now with level 20 and two people dead, they can turn their attention on the core. Sonya diving deep here. There's the focus on the Muradin. Very good focus, but now Phoenix forcing the disengage. Trickle up, turning attention. There's a Twilight Dream on the Diablo. Couldn't secure the kill. Diablo does go down. Mosher not able to get the save there. Triglob just right-clicking the core. 30% health. Are they going to be able to get it? Malfurion has dropped now. And with Sonya, they are going to get it. And that's going to be the game. Hot Banana. 
off to a hot start this season. 2-0 and in their first week, six points. Moving up to the top of the Division BE standing. Very, very strong game from them. We're going to see if we can get a post-game interview. We'll be right back here on the Nexus Gaming Series. Stay tuned. All right, that was nice and quick, just the way I like it. Lonely DB Smiley, no one on the right side of the screen tonight. But I am joined by two members of the winning Hot Banana, the captain and assistant captain, going to be Ray and Kestria. Kestria, who are you in game again? Sammy. Sammy, okay. Welcome, congrats on the very big win here. This is uh, caps off an undefeated week one for you, and you guys are new to Nexus Gaming Series, so starting 4-0. Yeah. Way to make your name felt. How do you guys feel after this week? We, we feel great. Actually. Yeah, we uh we were initially concerned, like because we never really were part of this. Uh, mm -hmm. But after after a few scrims and after our first game, we we definitely got more comfortable with it. We uh we've been playing with each other for a while, so our coordination is pretty pretty solid. So that wasn't really a fear we had. Mm -hmm. It was more of just the environment. The environment and the competition. We're feeling pretty good though. Yeah, I mean, you guys are off to a great start, you know. Um, you guys are in Division C East, so moving up to the top of the standings there. Um, was heading into this series with Hot Boys, this was their first game, um, so it would be difficult to scout them, but was there anything you were worried about them scouting, and did they do it? Uh, so game Frost Absol, yeah, so Frost Absol on their team um, was on Regen Red, and we play Regen Red at the uh, the end of the season, so we thought, mm -hmm. oh, we might as well scrim them. They'll be able to scout for us. It won't really be that big of a deal playing them because they'll know all our tricks. Uh, but him being put on this team, we we were a bit worried that uh, they would find out our Garage Melf or Garage Stukov combo, as along with our Mediv, because that that's really the focal point of our uh, of our comps. It, it's very fast paced, blow up team fighty comps. Mm hmm. Yeah, you guys, I mean, you definitely had the blow-ups. I just, Ray, I mean, you were fearless in game number one, to say the <laughs> least. You just walk up to the enemy team like, hey, guys, we're fighting now. And um, <laughs> it seemed that a, a, a lot of times, like, just, you know, you were able to kind of get, maybe it was a slow from, from Jaina or it was a slow from somewhere. You are able to get that kind of perfect flip stun to just delete mm -hmm. people so quick. So Honestly, it's, it's all well on Mosher for that follow-up. Mosher yeah. is just... Absolutely solid with those roots or those silences. Oh, it's Mosher. I've been saying Mosher. Yeah, it's <laughs> rip. It's all right. That's fine. <laughs> God damn it, Smiley. Sucks at casting again. But, um, <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun to cast those games. So, you know, very kind of pick-heavy comp. Dragonshire, you guys pretty much dominated. Seemed to struggle a bit ending the game just because the game dragged on a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Not to say that that's necessarily a worry, but why do you think that game kind of dragged on? Uh, I just think the lack of confidence ending early we have. Um, we know that we could end with like a 20-minute Dragon Knight, uh, but with a 15-minute one or a 14-minute one and the death timers are still low on their team because we're three levels up, uh, that's that's when we get a, that's when I get a bit worried anyway as, as the shot caller. I, uh, I focus more on playing safe in he in says. terms of ma in terms of macro <laughs> game uh in terms of team fights and stuff i i tend to overextend a little sometimes right and that you know it worked out tonight might get more punished later i do want to say that your diablo uh i mean you stacked that that uh that quest at 13 up 
just so fast. And I mean, you were deleting Muradin off it. It was yeah, uh, it was yeah. very impressive to watch. Um, so with this, now heading into Volskaya, um, not and again, like, so you're gonna watch draft, and you're gonna you might get annoyed by how much I'm like I'm just shocked Phoenix has not participated in the draft. <laughs> you guys went with the Jaina and the Greymane over the Phoenix. Is that you? think they're better than phoenix or you think it was just better for your comp like what what was what honestly that? we don't find phoenix to be terrifying at all okay yeah um we we've sort of developed a, a method of uh handling phoenix on our end um and it, it really suits our play style in the first place so we don't really find him to be that troublesome um because he's don't it whatsoever. yeah yeah uh as for Greymane and jaina um daff our our offlaner he he tried picking up phoenix a bit but it just doesn't really suit our style i guess right um, the the way we play things it's the the way phoenix is it's he seems to be a bit too i i don't know what it just doesn't really he is, fit he's a bit one dimensional in the standpoint yeah. i mean it is all auto attack damage and really the only thing that seemingly makes him kind of OP over other traditional auto attackers who actually have more versatile abilities. It's well, it's, it's, it's the damage off slow and it's also just probably the best escape in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're, if we're completely honest, um, mm -hmm. but maybe with... Genji's swift strike takes that for me, but the second best one for sure. Oh, that, well, okay. I mean, <laughs> Genji's, yeah, that's a fair point. I, Genji Swift Strike, I always think of it as, as a damage ability as much as yeah. an escape. And so I when I'm thinking pure escapes, I tend not to think it. But yeah. Anyway, with that, um, congrats on the win. Congrats on the six points to start. Uh, what are your expectations this season now that you've, you've kind of gotten a taste? Or do you, are you still trying to feel things out? Uh, I mean, there, there's always going to be some feeling things out, knowing that we've, we've never really played against some of the other players uh, on the other teams. But our, our expectations is definitely to make it uh, to the post-tournament post stuff, to, to make it in the... At least the top eight to the next, yeah. uh, next section, for sure. And honestly, like, I'm just happy to be playing some really competent people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was fun to watch from my end. A uh, really good combo, really good synergy. With that, um, thanks again for coming in. Any shout-outs? Uh, shout-outs to my team. Uh, Mosher, Daff, Draco, Sammy, all of you. Uh, just Shout fantastic. Shout-out to the CPK people and the people on Flying Bubblegum. As well as the, uh, the OPP people that come over from Mosher and Daff's uh, gang. Uh, and also Linehouse for writing our interview or writing our article, getting that up as soon as possible. Like it, it means a lot getting exposure with a with a new team like this. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. Um with everyone else here. Uh thanks for watching Nexus Gaming Series. Um I'm DB Smiley. You can follow me here at twitch.tv slash DB Smiley, Nexus Gaming Series dot com if you want to join get in the discord obviously season four started no openings for teams at the moment but you can always join a team as a sub or as a you know main roster member with tryouts um also follow me at twitter.com slash death by smiley uh check out nexus gaming series i have a lot of fun with it i think you will too it's been getting a lot of good press and it's because the admins have earned it they've done absolutely fantastic work uh the web development people have been fantastic so definitely get in and check it out uh, thanks again for watching, and take care. Have a great night in the Nexus. Thank you again.